Today I'm going to talk about the Pirelli calendar and how I shot the first one in 1991. Not the first one, the first one for me, which was in the Massive Centrale in the wilds of France. It was I had to build a, a, a awning from real scaffolding poles over each model, so she was in shadow. So what I did was shoot. I, lo I lit her with a with one beauty dish, and then I used the Hasselblad with an iris shutter, which is what it does, so I could darken the light in the background. And it started off with the Egyptian goddess Cleopatra and various different heroines from different walks of life. And it was very well researched by Martin Walsh, who was the curator of the Pirelli Hunter at that time. So this first one, as you can see, is this beautiful Italian girl who was flown in by a helicopter to the site. I was knee deep in water because we found this old Roman ruin, uh, luckily or blessedly, and um, I was at the camera looking up like that with the, my assistants holding the swaying boom with the light on and over that is a black awning so she would virtually be in silhouette. When the flash goes off it lights her so and then I can darken her light in the background because of the iris shutter by varying the speed of the, uh, the lens to, uh, of the camera uh, to the, the aperture in the lens. So this is the camera I used, which is the Hasselblad 500C, and throughout, up to date and really now, everything I do is shot on a 150 Hasselblad lens, or if I'm shooting 35mm, it's a 90. I very rarely use wide angles, but I do if it, if it works for the shot. But this is the first one, Cleopatra, and as you can see from the props here, uh, you'll see anyway, um, all these props were made by the people who make the props and the costumes for the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden for the ballet, the Royal Ballet. Um, because Pirelli has a wonderful budget and you know a lot of the time one thinks that photographer is great, it's not really the photographer is that great, it's just that the model, the styling and all the costumes are phenomenal. This one's the Spanish Pirelli uh, heroine. I can't remember her name now, but on the back of each calendar, which is quite a, a large thing, is the history of this lady, uh, who, who was that, whatever her name was, um, Corella Marajoles, I don't know, that's not a real name. But, and then she was in the Spanish Revolution against Napoleon, um, when Napoleon invaded Spain, I think. So that was her, and we shot this cannon in the background, as you can see, it was a real cannon, and we took it with us in it from London in a huge um, removal van. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, or very funny for us, fortunate, too fortunate, bad fortune, good fortune, the doors fell out, were open and the cannon's very heavy and it rolled down the street somewhere in the middle of the massive centrale and the gendarmes came and asked us whose cannon was this? And it was ours and we had to get um, a winch to pull it back into the, um, into the truck. She was great throughout it all. I mean, it, the wind was blowing, it was quite cold in point of fact. And she just stood there and just did whatever I said, but I couldn't speak. Spanish, but I tried to say things in a Spanish way to them, and she got it. And we afterwards we all had. Uh, uh, I wasn't drinking then, but anyway, I given up drinking. But they all had, you know, the Perrier and a lovely evening. And a, every night after the shoot, we tried to do two a day, but it was very difficult. Because, as you can see from the the awning that we built, I built over the the, the model. So she was in silhouette and then I lit her with a flash with a generator. So you could always hear this, this Honda generator clanking away. And because um, we were miles from anywhere. Um, then um, we had to find different locations, you know. You'll see from Spain, China, you know, Mexico, uh, for the different heroines. Thanks goodness for the Hasselblad. If I said I want this girl and that girl, they just said, okay. Yeah. And he just got on Martin and said, is she let me look at her? Oh, it's fabulous. So that's what we did, and uh, she came, and her, her boyfriend or something went off to join the fight, the British, and this was her, so she joined the army, pretended to be a boy, and we had a haircut like that, and did like that, so she could become a drummer boy. And actually, not only that, apparently from the story, she became a great hero in, uh, in the war against the British, and uh, she was a drummer, and then she became, she picked up a, a musket and threw the British out of America. So there we jolly well are. And this is shot on the top of a mountain, as you can see tracking across it. 
There's the massive central in the background, as you can see. Um, well, you'll see from the picture because we'll be showing the tracking over it. And it's all shot on film. I shot on Ektachrome 100 and it was very nerve wracking. Although I had Polaroids, I, it was not like digital. You can see what we were doing. We were miles from anywhere, staying in little, scrimpy little French hotels, which was great fun. The, the girls and myself and the art directors and the makeup and the hair. And then we drive the next day 50, 60 miles to the next location, which Martin Walsh and I had been in a battered old <laughs> Citroën driving through France in the massive trend so to find different locations. We also had to find China, which I haven't got with me, and um, you know, Mexico and various other things. Actually, the cover was Delacroix, the revolution with the girl over the barricades. Uh, that was the first one, but uh, I haven't managed to find that because you know, it was 91. Anyway, this one was the Ecuadorian girl and shot from the balancing on a, on a rock um, <laughs> with the camera being held by assistance just to get to make sure there was no camera shake. The thing is that they wanted to have a very, uh, Martin and the Pirelli wanted to have it looking like almost like classical paintings of um, different, of the period, of different periods when before there was any photography and uh, that was the, I, I think they thought I achieved that. It was wonderful to do anyway with these wonderful costumes again by um, the people who, as I said, do the Royal Ballet and the, um, the Opera House. Anyway, the next one would be Mexico. And we found this old church, as you can see when you track over the picture, with the two bells like that. And I wanted to get the bells to ring like flowing, just to give it a bit of atmosphere like you know the good, the bad and the ugly. I mean, strangely enough, the next one I did was shot in Almeria where they did shoot the good, the bad and the ugly with Clint Eastwood. And um, that's where we shot the second one, which you'll see um, later on. Anyway, this was her and she was wonderful. She never really spoke a talk, but I think she spoke Mexican Spanish. And uh, even though me, me pretending to speak Spanish, Jorge Spetile, Cojolo, Juarez, Tacos. <laughs> The, the Hasselblad 500C, mechanical wind-on, it, it, it just never let me down, even though was, we had to spray out all the dust and stuff that was in them, because sometimes the dust and the, and the storms and rain and things, we'd be, it'd be raining lightly, but she'd be under the awning so she didn't get wet. So we would shoot from, we'd have to shoot everything on the time limit, two shots a day and then rebuild the set every day in the next place. So it was a, a sort of, it's like shooting a movie from like, you were up at five in the morning, you drove to the place, you did the shoot, looked at all the Polaroids, which always either melted or were too cold to develop. So when I came back to London, of course, I spent uh, two days in the bathroom, <laughs> trembling, looking at the clip tests, because it was, you know, to make sure they were all okay, because there was no way of seeing the actual film. And it's a massive investment, two weeks, maybe nearly three, driving around France, taking all these pictures with nowhere to process the pictures. So one has to be very sure about what you're doing. And this was the famous, beautiful Susie Bick, and she played the Queen of Scotland here. As you can see, all, you know, one of the most beautiful models in the world. And funny thing about Susie, I said, Susie, they couldn't get her because she was shooting in Paris or shooting somewhere else all over the world. And um, she, they said, oh, we can get her. We gave her the address of this little place near Orléans or somewhere, I don't know, in Montpellier or somewhere in the middle of France. I don't know if that's the right place to say, but it was. And they, she got in a, they flew her to this place and then the car drove her a long way, I think a whole day or half a day, to the hotel where we had. It didn't get there till the middle of the night. And um, we left notes on the door saying, oh, Susie, when you get here, don't just push the door open, the, the concierge is waiting for you. And she might have fallen or he might have fallen asleep, but your room is ready with a hot bath and shower or whatever you want, and we'll start in the morning. We won't start too early because you're, um, I, did, I didn't have to have to, the sun coming out. I just didn't have to have no rain because I lit everything. Everything was lit. All I used in the landscape was the, as a backdrop. So anyway, Susie arrived in the night and we were petrified because we were all worried. We said, well, where is Susie? And she said, uh, the car door opened of this car that was parked and she said, I'm so sorry, I didn't want to disturb anyone. So I slept in the car. <laughs> so we went, oh, oh, what a relief. Anyway, so that was Susie and that, she's the Queen of Scotland. 
and uh, that was shot. I mean, we did have a fire burning in this brazier at the back there, but by the time we did the makeup and the hair done, we'd used all the firewood, so we had to just do it without. And of course, when they were shot, there wasn't any Photoshop or any, well, there was a bit, but I, we went into it. It was just, this is how they really were, so we had to make sure every single twig and chicken and bird and fire and flower and flu and thing was done because you had to do it. There was no second chances, then we had to drive on to the next one. Anyway, thanks for joining. Enjoy, I hope you did. Thanks for looking at them. And I'm going to talk about the Almeria Desert Shoot the next year, in 92. So, okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part. <laughs>